Good morning, everybody. Pastor John here. Good morning. Good morning. Cody uh, had a great idea about just uh, encouraging you all as you read the F-260. And so happy Monday morning to you. We wanted to dive in and just take maybe like five or 10 minutes and talk through um, just some things about the F-260 and then actually talk a little bit about today's passage. And um, a couple things that you'll need if you're going to study the Bible. Uh, one is you need a Bible. And we use the CSB version at our church. Another good version is the ESV. Another good version is the NIV. Um, if you want to read what we're reading on Sunday, we use the CSB. And we use the CSB because it is, um, it's easy to understand and also has a high level of word-to-word -word accuracy. And so we found that's a good one. Cody, what else do you need if you're going to study the Bible? Well, uh, you're going to need prayer. Um, mm. I think prayer is a good way to open up. Um, your time with God by asking him to bless your time with him by asking him to help you to focus on his word um, and to just basically take your mind off of the stresses of everyday day-to-day -day life and just really sink into that moment as you spend time with God. So then before we talk about anything else we need why don't you pray for us? Yes God uh, we come before you Lord and we just ask that you bless our time in your word. Lord, would you speak to us? Let us know everything that it is that you would want us to know. And God, would you give us the grace to apply these truths to our lives? Lord, open up our minds and our understandings that we may be conformed to the image of your son through this time. Allow us to focus and to pay great attention to you, for you are our master, you are our Lord. And these things we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Before we keep going, let me just make sure we're running here. That way we're not wasting anybody's time. Okay, we're good. Uh, a couple other things that you will need or that are helpful is a highlighter. Yes. Uh, highlighters are great. Now, they make specific highlighters for Bibles. This is like a wax. And the reason it's a wax is because it's not that wet ink. The wet ink will soak through your Bible. Maybe you don't care. That's fine, but mm -hmm. then this is something that you can use to highlight and you don't see it on the other page. So this is called Mr. Pen. It's a gel highlighter. You can get those online. Mm -hmm. Another thing I like is made by the same company. It's a non-bleed fine point pen. And if you want to underline stuff, it won't show through to the other side. You know what? I actually find that the more I kind of invest in my Bible study, the more I get into it and the more I get out of it. So yeah. that's just a thought. Uh, Cody also recommended maybe having a study Bible. Yeah. What have you found helpful about study Bibles? Well, yeah, uh, when you're opening up God's Word, there's going to be some some words that pop up that you're wondering, man, what does this mean? And, and sometimes it can be a little bit distracting with trying to continue reading and you say, I, uh, that last paragraph, I didn't really understand. And so having a study Bible handy while you're doing your devotion time um, really helps with just looking up that word or understanding that verse a little bit better as you spend time with God, uh, moving towards being able to uh, rightly apply um, what you see there in the text. So there's a lot of good study Bibles. The one I really have liked the last 10 years is the ESV study Bible. Um, so again, we use the CSB at church, but I like the ESV study Bible. And the reason is, is as you read through it, it has all these little notes at the bottom that answers a lot of theological and application questions. They also have charts, they have maps, and it just is a lot of information. And if you're looking for the most value for your money, a study oh, yes. Bible like this or the CSB study Bible is going to be huge uh, for you because it just has so much information in there. So I have a, a just a Bible with no notes in it, but then I have a study Bible as well if we need to look something up. Um, so... Those are the things that I take in. Occasionally, and uh, I, I like to have a book like this that's like a Bible overview. This is a book by Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart called How to Read the Bible Book by Book. And it gives a bird's eye view of each book of the Bible. So Isaiah is 66 chapters, but here in 10 pages, it tells you what Isaiah is about like a flyover. And so these things can be helpful uh, because the author is always has a big picture that he's trying to communicate, even when you're in a small passage. 
And uh, what we're going to do today is just walk through part of today's reading. In today's reading, you're reading, you're on day 161 of week 33, Monday, and that's Luke 9, 10 through 62. And we're going to just read through the section that is Luke 9, 23 through 27. We're going to read through that together, and then we're going to actually go through the workbook with you and use the method that they use, which is called HEAR. Highlight, explain, apply, respond. And so, Cody, you want to read half of that, and, and then I'll read the other half? Sure. Luke 9, starting at Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. For what does it benefit someone if he gains the whole world and yet loses or forfeits himself? For whatever is ashamed of me, whoever, and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and that of the Father and the holy angels. Verse 27, truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Uh, so the first step is to highlight, and I think highlight's really, really about noticing. And so uh, do you write in that Bible, Cody, or do you keep it nice and clean? Uh, this one I do write in. Okay. I do write okay. in this one, yeah. So um, maybe we could start off by just saying what did we notice or what did we highlight? Let's just start there and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I highlighted was the word daily. Mm. If anyone wants to follow me after me, let him decide, deny himself, tape up his cross daily and follow me. Mm. And I really was, it was pressed upon me that it just doesn't say take up your cross, but it says daily. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. The thing that stood out to me as I was reading um, and the thing that I, I'm going to highlight is right there in verse 24, where it says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will save it. And so I highlight that because I want to know what does he mean by will save it? That's good. And what's it, what I noticed, too, and it's hard to highlight this without highlighting the whole thing, but there's a lot of, like, opposites in this passage. Mm. You know, saving versus losing, benefit versus forfeiting, mm. ashamed um, mm. with, like, the idea of rejection. Wow. And so there's a lot of, like, contradictions in a sense. Mm. Uh, so when you highlight, you're kind of trying to explore. Like Cody said, what does that mean, mm -hmm. you know? So, in the here method, we start off by highlighting, by noticing, by thinking it through, and then we go on to explaining, to explaining. Mm -hmm. And so we can explain the whole passage, or we can explain, um, we can try and summarize to ourselves what those different things mean by looking up in a study Bible. For instance, even focusing on that word daily. Mm -hmm to try and explain why that word is there, it made me realize that following Jesus, it is a one-time decision that you start, but it's also a daily decision that you make to die to yourself and follow him. And that's interesting to me. Um, what about verse 24? How would you try to explain that in a way so that it settles deeper in your mind and heart? Yeah, we're just looking at the, the call to to taking up our cross, it basically furthers, explains itself in verse 24. Oh, okay. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. And so there is this sort of desire that Jesus has for us to be willing to deny ourselves and to give ourselves to his, uh, to his reasons and his purposes. And in doing so, 
he says we will save our life or we will be saved or we will see eternal life. Um, and so, yeah, that's one thing that to highlight and to explain and look through the study Bible and see how it breaks it down um, so that we may even apply that to our own lives. Yeah, so in this Bible, uh, when I look up Luke 9.24, it says to see Mark 8.35 because it's a similar passage. So when I go back to Mark 8.35 specifically about that verse of saving and losing and losing and saving, it says in this study Bible, Jesus' paradoxical statement demands two different senses of the word life. Whoever lives a self-centered life focused on this present world, and they say that's what he means by saving his life. In other words, you're preserving your life with comforts and wealth and safety and control, but you will not find eternal life. You'll lose it. But whoever gives up his self-centered life of rebellion against God, which is where Jesus says loses his life, for the sake of Christ and the gospel, will find everlasting communion with God, will save it. So then, like, trying to get that in my mind more, if I live for me now in this world, which actually feels like saving my life, I will lose my life for eternity. I will not have fellowship with God. But if I give up my life to Jesus, I'll actually save my life because I'll be saved by Christ and know him and his wealth and the kingdom of God forever. Amen. So that's a pretty good explanation we got yes. from there of that verse. Absolutely. Uh, we kind of have a principle. But then the next step of the HEAR method, H-E-A, is apply. Apply. That's right. How do we apply that principle? Yes. And so one of the things that we've taken a look at so far is that we're to take up our cross daily and deny ourselves. And so God actually expects for us to be applying uh, this principle of denying ourselves daily, mm -hmm. right? And so how do we apply uh, something like this to our day-to-day -day lives? Um, one thing that we're doing uh, maybe is even reading the F-260, mm -hmm. where sometimes we may desire to get our day started doing something else or watching our favorite uh, news outlet, but Jesus desires for us to spend time with him daily, right? We know right. that from other passages. And so that is one way that we could apply um, this truth to our lives by picking up the F-260 and, um, and, and spending time with the Lord. And that makes me think maybe even more like that might mean I have to deny myself mm -hmm. something that I either is sinful or maybe not be sinful. Yeah. Maybe I need to, like, put down the phone. Maybe yeah. I need to, like, not watch Netflix. Yeah. Maybe I need to make this a priority in the morning. Mm -hmm. And even though there's things that I want to do, maybe I need to put those things second so I can follow God. Wow. Yes. This is why I also think that the writing that's in the F260 journal is helpful. Because after you go through the HEA uh, part of here, in reading this, it actually helps you apply it. There's a sentence here on page 172 that says, as Jesus' disciples, we are challenged to live a life of self-denial focused on selfless service of others. Jesus taught that following him is about putting the needs of others, both physical and spiritual, ahead of our own. So Cody focused on self-denial to serve God. What he's saying is self-denial to serve others so now I have that in my head as I go into my day and I'm thinking, God loves me, but the way to show the love of God to others is to follow Jesus and make others more important to me. So how can I serve others? Now, now I have to start thinking about it, right? I have to be proactive and go, okay, how can I put my wife before myself? How can I put Cody before me? Um, and that doesn't mean that we have to do everything that everyone wants us to do, but it does mean our, our lives should be marked by uh, sacrificing ourselves in, in order to serve others. So I think those are pretty good applications. Absolutely, me too. Now here comes the part where we can't just sit here, we actually have to get up. Because yeah. the last letter out of here 
is H-E-A-R, respond. And it would be nice to have a Bible lesson where we don't have to do anything, but this is the part where we're actually called to take action. Mm. So let's put ourselves in the spot. How can we put someone else in front of us today? Mm. That's I'm sure Nisha has some suggestions. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, when I get home, I mean, I could do things that I usually don't do. You know, every household sort of feels, you know, the husband or wife usually does these things. And so in an act of serving my wife, maybe I could do something that she usually does. If that's um, getting the stove started, you know, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't cook as much, but I can get it started or uh, washing the dishes. Usually I, I handle the kids. She's washing dishes. She's getting the meals prepped. But maybe I could throw the, get the kids going in the tub and, and take care of some of the things that she normally does and just figure out ways that I could serve my wife as I deny myself mm -hmm. um, for her good. Yeah, you know, I think about something similar because when I go home, I tend to need some time to unplug, but my children want to see me. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think maybe I need to take five minutes before I get home to kind of unplug and get my mind straight and then walk in the door ready to engage them as a way to serve them. Um, and so rather than just sort of expecting that I can do what I want when I want it, maybe I need to be prepared to love them as soon as I come in the door rather than taking my five minutes to myself then. Um, I, I think what I'm realizing even is that serving others takes proactivity and it takes thinking. Absolutely. Absolutely. And proactively denying self. So this is great. Cody suggested this, and I feel like I've grown spiritually in these 10 minutes that we've had. And so I'm really thankful. Um, what have you learned? What are you, where are you called to serve others? How can you deny yourself in order to follow Jesus? Um, we are going to just take a moment and close with prayer here, and then we'll let you go. Cody, would you close us in prayer? Yes. Father God, we thank you for our time together. Lord, we thank you that your word speaks directly to our souls. And we thank you, God, that you are able to complete us through your word. And so, Father, right now we ask that you would give us the strength. Would you give us the knowledge? Would you give us the skills? Would you give us the wisdom? Would you give us the foresight to think about how we could serve others and deny ourselves for your glory? And these things we pray and we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you like this, if this is helpful, let us know and we'll do it again. Get in the book today. Bye-bye.